Ananda once went to the Buddha and commented on how important it was to have friends in the practice. He said, it's half of the holy life. And the Buddha said, don't say that. It's the whole of the holy life. And he gave himself an example. If we didn't have the Buddha as our friend in the holy life, where would we be? We wouldn't know anything about the possibility of putting it into suffering. Our sense of our potential as human beings would be a lot more limited than it is. It's only when you open up your mind to the idea it is possible to put an end to suffering that you can actually do it, that you can actually put forth the effort, because it takes a lot. And if you felt like it was futile, you wouldn't bother. You devote your energies to things that promised more, more possible results, more likely results. So having the right friends outside is a very important part of the practice, and taking the Buddha as our number one friend. It's also important to have good friends inside. This refers to all the voices we carry around in our minds. And it's amazing how much power they have over us. But it turns out it's power that we give them. We can take the power away. So it's important that you learn to listen to what kind of voices are running your life, and particularly the voices that place limitations on you, the ones that get you discouraged, the ones that tell you that you can't do this or that's just much too hard for anybody to do. Those are not your friends. And after all, verbal fabrication. Where does fabrication come from? It comes from ignorance. So you have to learn how to look at that process. And the best way to look at it is to step out of it. But to, before you can step out of it, you have to use verbal fabrication to get yourself out. Learn how to think in ways that are more encouraging. And learn how to talk to yourself about the breath a lot. Be tuned in to the breath as much as possible. Make this your meditative dwelling or your abiding place. The breath is always here, as are all the other topics from meditation. You know, infinite space can be experienced here. Infinite consciousness, nothingness, emptiness. They're all right here. It's a question of what you're tuned into. They say that alcoholics, as soon as they walk into a house, pretty much very quickly pick up where the alcohol is kept. The same with chocoholics. They walk into a house and they pretty much know very soon where the chocolate, chocolate is kept. Well, you want to be a breathaholic. Where is your breath right now? How is your breath right now? Tune into it. Stay there. And every voice that in the mind helps you stay there, that's a friend. Any voice that pulls you away for the time being, regard as not a friend. One of those friends that makes friends only to cheat them, or that are good only in word. They say, think about this. This will be a lot more interesting. And you think about it, where does it take you? It doesn't take you any place, any, any place especially good, anything new, anything you didn't really know before. A lot of our inner voices are companions and ruinous fun as well. You don't bother with this practice you're doing. Let's go think about food or sex or whatever else you find is entertaining. You've got to learn how to be discerning in who you associate with inside your mind. So for the time being, your friends are the ones that point you to the breath, encourage you to stay with the breath, remind you of all the good things that come from staying with the breath. And when you're actually able to do it for a little while, they give you encouragement. And say you're able to get stay with the breath for five minutes. You could do this and my gosh, five minutes, this is pretty pitiful. Well, that doesn't help. What helps is saying, hey, we have five minutes, let's try in ten minutes now. Learn to talk to yourself in a way that's encouraging.
this is a lot of what's required for persistence, for discipline. It's not just gritting your teeth and bearing with it. It's learning how to make it entertaining, how to make it enjoyable, how to get your spirits up as you stick with the work. And you find that once you can do this, you've learned some very important skills. These are just important in the meditation as your ability to stay focused for long periods of time. In other words, your ability to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and just keep on going. Finding ways to energize yourself. This is how tasks get done. This is how progress gets made. This is how people really make a change in themselves by believing it's possible to do it, and then making it as enjoyable as possible all along the way. Once you've been able to stay with the breath for a while, then you can look back at your old conversations, the voices that used to have such power over your mind. And taking the breath, taking the present moment as your foundation, you begin to see more clearly what kind of motivation lies between what kind of voice. And you get better and better at distinguishing your inner friends from your inner non-friends, and better at associating with your two friends inside. So these can be seen as the whole of the holy life as well, having good friends, having noble friends inside, the voices that encourage you in the practice. Because without them you couldn't get off first base. <laughs>